Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Let us open up with um, a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us all here this evening. As we come in fellowship with one another, we ask that you may please open up your word unto us, that you may accept our, our praise, that you may um, that your presence may engulf us, and that you may help us to, to put aside anything that we've been going through this week, and that we may just enjoy being in your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Number, our first song is number 163. Number 163 at the cross. Amen. Alas, and did my Savior bleed. And did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred land for sinners such as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I receive my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Was it for crimes that I have done? He suffered on the tree. Amazing pity, grace unknown, and love beyond cross at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my son and now I am happy all the day. But drops of grief can never repay the debt of at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Number 334. Number 334, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Yeah. Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, tune my heart to sing Thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, Call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever to adore thee. May I still thy goodness prove. While the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love. Here I raise my Ebenezer. Hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, 
here to rescue me from danger, interpose his precious blood. Oh, to grace how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind me closer still to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Our final song will be number 217. 217, The Church Has Waited Long. And since it's a new song, we're going to play the instrumental. Hopefully everyone learned it this week. So I expect you guys to help me. <clears throat> the church has waited long, perhaps sent more to see. And still in loneliness she waits, a friendless stranger she. To hear thy voice, to see thee face to face, to share thy crown and glory then, as now we share thy grace. Come, Lord, and wipe away the curse, the sin, the stain. And make this blighted world of ours Thine own fair world again All right. Good evening everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, <coughs> nice to be here um, this evening to over these things with us. Um, this is the part of the service where we share testimonies of how the Lord has been um, good to us and kind to us. So if anyone have any testimony <coughs> to share at this time, um, this is the opportunity. I would like to say praise God for um, the Lord's answer to prayer. Uh, we, we really don't know how much the Lord um, does for us, and I've been seeing more um, more clearly how the Lord is is still in the business of answering our prayers, and He and some and we know I know we all can attest to, um, especially the guys had that when we pray for an understanding of something, and as and as and as we are praying, the understanding comes to our mind. Yeah. Or something flashes in our mind to, to be like search here or or look up this word or or what have you, and in that is the is the very thing you're looking for. So, so it's a fulfillment of of where Daniel, not Daniel, where Gabriel says, um, make this man to understand. Oh no, Christ said that. Yeah, Go make ahead. this man to understand. Yeah, but. Yeah, and he says, um, I come to show thee. Yeah, I come to show thee from the yeah, beginning of that prayer that, um, that, that he, has, he has come. So, so yeah, I say praise God for that. Even in, in but, but it's also in, 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 in natural things as well, where the Lord answers prayers. So, Amen. like I say, praise God for what he has done <clears throat> for us in this, in this week. Amen. Praise God for these answered prayers and the understanding in which he's helping us to, to glean from his word um, for us in these times as we need these kind of answers to get through the things that are taking place be um, before us. Um, is there any other testimony anyone would like to share? Yeah. 
I like to also thank God for helping me on the road throughout the past the past few days as well, and also for um, mm -hmm. sending light on the things that that soon soon shall be seen on this earth as well. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, and for all the things in which the things which He has helped us helped us to turn from and um, and help us to fight those those um, same things as well. So I'd like to thank God for that as well. Amen. Praise <coughs> God. <coughs> um, are there any other testimonies anyone would like to share with us this evening? Um, yeah. Go ahead, Aiden. Um, thank God. had to pray and like I felt like crying. I just had to pray because Abel was also crying really loud as well. So I just was feeling overwhelmed at that moment. And um, when I woke up a couple hours later it was completely gone. Oh praise and God. You know as you bring it up there's a remedy in the testimonies for my room. Um when she was given a Ellen White was sharing a testimony that she had a headache. She also had migraine pains. And some one of her grandchildren, a little child, came and knew that she was sick and said, Grandma, do you want me to rub your forehead? And she said, sure. And she put her hand in cold water and rubbed, and rubbed her forehead and the pain went away. Um, because the water, the reaction of the water and something, the water and the rubbing does something and, and the body responds to it by relieving the pain from the head. So, um, so one, a simple remedy for headaches is actually cold water on the hand and rubbing the forehead. I think there was something else. I don't remember it, but I know rubbing the forehead was one of them. Mm -hmm. So the next time that comes up, I would give that a try. Mm -hmm. The thing that it, it does well as the part that I do know is the, the coldness of the water helps. Yeah, it, yes, it, yeah. Yeah, it helps to draw the blood away. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So it's a, it's a nice little remedy, and she said her pain went away, and, and, and just like that, she you know, things turned out well. So, are there any other testimonies? And a, another thought to that, you know, she, she says water is one of the most helpful things um, in sickness. You know, um, I think she has a quote saying that we should, we should really understand the usage of water treatment, because water treatment plays a huge part in, in, in natural remedies and so many sicknesses. Especially inflammation. Yeah. yeah. Any other testimony? Yeah. Aaron. Aaron, go ahead. Thank God for the um, sun. Amen. Thank God for uh, the food. Amen. And yeah. Amen. Oh, praise God. That's wonderful. Thank God for these natural things. Amen. So because of that, there's always something to thank God for. Amen. Amen. Oh, so are there any other testimonies before we begin? Thank you. Praise God for helping me with my studies. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Um, before we begin, uh, we'll pray, and then we'll, uh, we'll I'll say something about that. Shall we pray? Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, you've heard the testimonies of thanksgiving. Oh, Lord, for an understanding of your word and answering prayers, and even aiding, oh, Lord, the, the ability of strength in life at four years old to run around and to, to play with, with, with his parents and friends and loved ones, um, for, for Romario, the protection and the blessings, oh, Lord, in which you've given and travel, um, and Aaron, with, with uh, thank you for the natural things, and Alyssa with studying, and and Lord, all the variant, we have many things that we can thank you for, Lord. We, one thing we thank you for is for the ability to be here this evening, whereby we can gather together in fellowship and open up your word. 
and father by faith. Um, Jesus said if we ask anything in his name, that he will do it. And he told us, O oh Lord, that, that you're more willing to give your Holy Spirit to them that ask. So we ask for your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord, for we lack wisdom. As long as we're in this world and finite human beings, we always lack wisdom. And you said, if, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who give it to all men liberally and upbraid not. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. So, Lord, we ask in faith because you, the evidence is Jesus says that we are to ask and that you are more willing to give. So please give us your Holy Spirit. And we ask that you also appoint your holy angels to bless us by their presence, flapping their wings and scattering the darkness around us. And that you bring things clearly to our minds so that we might understand and appreciate these truths here in the end of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Um, the notes are in the chat. Let's just share them. Um, and this evening, I will, I'm going to need help in reading the things. I hope that something's going to be able to get it. Um, the notes. If she's not, I could give her my phone. I'll share with you. Okay. Um, so the notes are in the chat. And as I said, I, I thank God for, as Rashad and Mary brought out, and, and Aaron with the son, um, and, and Aiden with life to, to do things. I do thank God for these things and the evidence of God's presence and, and his life to do things and, and his blessings and his and answers to prayer is the Bible. That's the strongest evidence that we are sure that the Lord is hearing us when he gives us light from the Bible. Um, because we're told that the Holy Spirit guides into all truth and, and light comes from the very throne of God. And, and Ellen White tells us that um, light is a symbol of God's presence. And whenever a new passage of scripture bursts <laughs> upon our mind with new meaning, that's how we know that God is what? With us. Leading us. That's how we know he's leading us whenever we, we have life. And today, we want to look at something so simple in the scriptures. And for me, it, it was a blessing to, to, to go through it. Because um, as people of the third angel's message, the, uh, the Bible tells us that here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have what? If anyone remember, Revelation 14, 12. What do these the people have? They keep the commandments and they have the... Uh, um. Testimony. They have the faith of Jesus. Revelation 12 is a testimony of Jesus. And they're two, they're two different things. They, they, they're united, but they represent two different things. One is the testimony, and one is the faith of Jesus. It's his faith. So, so those who keep the commandments, they're going to have Christ's faith. But if I was to ask us, you know, what is faith? That's what we're going to look at. What is, what is faith in its most simplest of terms? And, and how do we get that faith? And, and what is that faith supposed to do? And and that truth, that, that, and what is truth, and what does it mean to us, and how are we supposed to have it, and how do we know we have it? So we want to look at some of these things in the most simplest of ways as we go, as we walk through the scriptures. Amen? Amen. All right, so let, can I have a reader for the first text? I think it's Hebrews 11. Right? Hebrews 11. Right? Now faith is the substance of, substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, we're just going to stop with that right there. Based upon that plain reading, what is faith? Substance and things. Things. Oh. And evidence. And evidence. evidence. Yeah. Amen. So faith is what? Evidence. No evidence, no what? No faith. No faith. No evidence, no faith. That's what the Bible just said. It, we, we just we just drawn this from, from being reasonable. It says faith is. And anyone who understands math, is means what? Faith oh, equals. Equal. So faith is equal to substance, and substance is evidence. So if we have evidence, we have faith. But where do we get this evidence from? Amen? Where do we get this evidence from so to sustain our faith? Let us continue. Can I have somebody read the highlighted portion? So we went into, we um, took a look at Webster's, 1828 Webster's Dictionary of what the def definition of faith is. I wanted to see how faith is defined by, 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 by by the dictionary, and then we're going to look at how the Bible uses this word faith in relation to the definition we're going to derive from, from Webster's 1828 dictionary. And what, about, what I like about the Bible and what I like about the Word of God is what we're really listening for is the voice of truth. That's what we're really listening for. So wherever the, wherever the truth is, it's always going to be reasonable to our minds, and it's always going to make sense, and it's always going to be in agreement with the Bible itself. Amen. Yeah. So, so truth is always in agreement. Wherever truth is heard, it has to be in agreement with the Bible. The Bible is the real definition of what truth is. But anywhere where we hear the, the voice of truth that lines up with the Bible, we know that that thing is truth. So this is why we're going to look 
at this de um, definition for evidence. What does evidence mean? Can I have a reader for the first highlighted portion? I think it's number one. The first highlight, loud and clear, please. That which elucidates and enables the mind to see truth, proof arising from our own perceptions by the senses, or from the testimony of others, or from inductions of reason. Our senses furnish evidence of the existence of matter, of sol solidity, of color, of heat and cold, of a difference in the quality in the qualities of bodies, of figure. Uh, the declarations of a witness furnish evidence of facts to a court and jury, and reasoning, or the deductions of the mind from facts or arguments, furnish evidence of truth or or falsehood. Okay, so already from that, what we derive from that, faith must appeal to the senses. Mm -hmm. Is everyone following? Mm -hmm. Faith must appeal to your sight. Because Jesus says, um, he says, <coughs> John says, behold the Lamb of God. You must see him, correct? Mm -hmm. Faith must appeal to your taste. The Bible says, taste and see what? That the Lord is good. Faith, mu faith must appeal to your hearing. Because the Bible says what? Faith comes how? By hearing. By hearing. Faith must appeal to touch. Because Jesus says, touch me and see. Handle me and see that is me. Is touch, put your finger into my side. Is that not what he said? He gave Thomas the evidence to satisfy his senses. So God always give us evidence to satisfy our sight, our hearing, our taste, our smell. Because the Bible says our sacrifice goes up to God as a sweet, what? Smell, smell and savor. So, our, so faith, we can smell, we can hear, we can see, we can touch, we can, we can feel. So faith must always appeal to our senses. But in order for it to do that, it must be real. Is everyone following? Mm -hmm. It has to be real. And notice what it said in there. It said matter. Faith must be matter. So, and it's using the example of heat. When it's hot outside, do we not feel it? We feel the heat. We, we get hot. That's the evidence that it's hot outside. That's just common sense. It appeals to our senses that it is hot outside. So we dress appropriately to meet that condition. Because of, if it's cold outside, we feel it. We feel that cold, so we dress appropriately to meet that cold condition. And, and notice, matter is also substance. So it says faith is the substance. Faith must have a matter, something we can touch, something we can see, something we can feel, because it's the evidence of what we can't see. Is everyone following? Mm -hmm. Faith is the evidence of what we can't see. But what, um, now let us continue. Can I have the definition, the next one, the next highlighted one? And we're going to build up on all of these things. Next highlighted one. Any instrument or writing which um, contains proof. Okay, so faith is any instrument or writing which contains proof. It's the Bible. It's the what? The Bible. It's the Bible, but it's not only the Bible. Aaron said it earlier. The sun is an instrument. Is everyone following? The moon is an instrument. It's, it contains information. It, is everyone following? Anything that contains information, this is, the sun is something we can physically see. It's something we can physically feel. And water is something we can physically touch. It's something we can physically drink. So in the water, in the sun, there's something written in it that gives us information of something or someone. Is everyone following? The Bible gives us information of something or someone. Is everyone following? Amen. So can I get a reader for the next one? We're going to build up on all these, these definitions. Can I have a reader for the next highlighted portion? I think it's three of them, correct? No. It's only... Two? You, well, you only have two highlighted. Uh, yeah, I think there was another one. You do have number, number three is there, though. Number three, uh, there was one more, I think. Let me see if I remember. Yeah. Um, number three is a witness. Yes, yes, I think it's that one. Can you read that one, please? A witness, one who testifies to a fact. This yeah. sense yeah. is yeah. improper. Huh? No, pretty oh, okay. This sense is improper and elegant, inelegant. though inelegant, though common and found even in Johnson's writings. Okay, so evidence is also a witness. All right, so let's build up on all these definitions. Um, the next one should be Jeremiah, right? Mm -mm. What is it? It's you have another meaning of evidence. Can I <coughs> read that one too, please? This is the highlighted one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think that was the third one. To oh. elucidate, to prove, to make clear to the mind, to show in okay. such a manner that the mind can apprehend the truth, or in a manner to convince it. The testimony of two witnesses is usually sufficient to, um, to evidence, the, to evidence the, the guilt of an offender. The works of creation clearly evidence to the existence of an infinite first cause. 
Stop. The works of creation, evidence of an infinite what? Call. First, First cause. cause. Yeah. It just makes sense. Yeah. Because the sun is evidence that it has a cause. Mm -hmm. In order for the sun to be there, what <clears throat> makes me know that there's a cause for that sun? Because the sun transmits information. When I look at the sun, the sun sheds light upon the earth. And what does it scatter? The darkness. So the sun teaches me that light allows me to see in the darkness. Yeah. If the sun came from nothing, nothing can have information. Yeah, because it's nothing. Because it's nothing. Yeah. So if nothing made the sun, there should be no information in the sun. Yeah. But because the sun has information, somebody who is information put that information in the sun, therefore telling me the sun has a cause. Amen. The cause for the sun being there is the one who made it, wanted it there, to teach you and I that there's a difference between light and darkness. Mm -hmm. and, that, and, and then Genesis says to give light up on the earth. Mm -hmm. So because the sun gives me this information, it has a cause. Because water, water tells me that I need to drink it when I'm thirsty, it has a cause. It has to have a cause. So someone who knew that I will be thirsty and I need water, placed water there to keep me alive. And to keep you alive, Amen. it has a cause. So there's, it, it, doesn't that appeal to our reason? Yeah. That's faith. That's what faith does. It appeals to your sense. It makes sense to the eyes. It makes sense to the seeing. It makes sense to the hearing. It makes sense to the touching. It makes sense to the, to the smelling. And it makes sense to the tasting. Faith is real. It's a substance. It's evidence. It's something tangible that points to something we can't see that's just as real as the thing we see. Amen? Amen. All right, so let us continue. I think it's Jeremiah now, right? First John 4, 20. First John 4, First John 4, 20. 20. Okay, I remember it. Okay, yes, read that, please. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Okay, so faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not what? Seen. So there must be evidence of something seen for me to believe in the God in whom I can't see. Amen. Philadelphia. Amen? Yeah. yeah, so there must be something I can see that gives evidence of the God that I can't see. And that's my evidence, that there is a God to fear. Amen. That's my evidence. And what I just said should appeal to our senses. Why? Because it just makes sense to the eyes, it makes sense to the hearing, it makes sense to the smelling, it makes sense to the touching, and it makes sense to the tasting. It just makes sense, and it appeals to our reason, and we must believe it. And when you go into the Bible, now that we looked at Webster, and we saw that Webster tells us that this is what faith means. This is how you define faith. Now let's look into the Bible and see what the Bible itself says about, the, says about evidence because faith is evidence. So let's see what the Bible says about evidence itself. So when you do this, and you can do this on your own time, or you can do it right now because it's quick, the only place you find evidence or evidences mentioned in the Bible, not at, correct me if I'm wrong, is in Jeremiah and Hebrews. These are the only two places you find it, just Jeremiah and Hebrews. And how many times do you think it's mentioned? Seven times. So we must have a complete what? Complete, complete faith. faith. We must have evidence. Com yeah, amen. So what completes our faith? Evidence is what completes our faith. And in the book of Jeremiah, that means the light we get from Jeremiah concerning evidence is a powerful witness to our faith. So let's go see what Jeremiah says about evidence. Let's take a look. He's six verses. Can I have a read loud and clear for these six verses? And I subscribed the evidence and sealed it. And took witness and weighed him the money and the balances. Yeah. So I took the evidence of the purchase, both that which was sealed according to the law and custom, and that which was open. And I gave the evidence of the purchase unto Baruch, the son of Neriah, the son of Messiah, in the sight of Hanamiel, my uncle's son, and in the presence of the witness that subscribed the book of the purchase before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these evidences, this evidence of the purchase, both which is sealed and this evidence which is open, and put them in an earthen vessel, that they may continue many days. Now when, Sorry. Now when I had delivered the evidence of the purchase unto Baruch, the son of Neriah, I prayed unto the Lord, saying, Men shall buy fields for money, and subscribe evidence, and seal them, and take witness in the land of Benjamin, and in the places about Jerusalem, and in the cities of Judah, and in the cities of the mountains, and in the cities of the valley, and in the cities of the south. For I will, 
for I will cause their captivity to return, saith the Lord. Amen. There is a lot Amen. of light in those verses. I mean, I can't even express it. There's just a lot of light in those verses. And I'm going to take that which is sufficient for this evening to keep it as short as I can possibly keep it. Amen? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Romero. Yeah, yeah, I like that. It's nice because there is one that is sealed. Amen. And then there's one that is What does it take in your mind to immediately? Um, Daniel yeah, 9, yeah, 24. Daniel 9, Amen. Daniel 11, Amen. Revelation 10, Amen. Revelation... You can keep going. Uh, Revelation like 7. Yeah, 7. Amen. You can you keep have going. a whole bunch of them. Amen. Like that. Yeah, that's nice. There's one that's... Yeah, yeah there's proof that it's sealed. Amen. That is open as well. Amen. I want us to catch this though. Jeremiah, what did Jeremiah buy? A land. Field. A field. Yeah. What are we? Jesus says we're a what? Yeah, we're a field. We're a field. Oh. Yes. So when Adam and Eve sinned, what did they do? They sold, sold themselves. They sold themselves to Satan. Yes. That's what they did. So what did Christ have to do? Buy us back. Buy us back. So that means in heaven, Christ went before the Father and he brought witnesses with him. And he says, Father, I'm going to buy back that field that was sold to, the, to Satan. But the Bible says, what, what was the price of the land? It's his life. It's his blood. Yeah. It's his blood. The price of his purchase is his blood. So Jesus, Jesus somehow, document was written in heaven that God was going to buy man back. And there was witnesses there to attest to this purchase. And the father sent his son to tell us about the purchase for God so loved the world that he purchased it with his son, with the life of his son. That's what's in that text. Is everyone following? Okay, but where was the evidence to be placed? In an earthen vessel. Why? Why? Christ, Christ came, came as a man. As a because Christ what? Came as a man. Because I will never leave thee. No for saving. saving. I will be with thee forever. Amen. This is the evidence of the purchase. I will be with man forever. That man might stand before me forever. Is everyone following? Amen. So go and, to go ahead. Yeah, and that shows that each man must must have have those things in them for, as well. Say it again. So that they might be sealed. Say each it again. Man, each man must have those things they, within themselves so amen. that they might be sealed. And they well. become the what? The, um, the evidence of evidence. the God that yeah. can't be seen. Amen. Yeah. They become the evidence of the God we can't see. Amen. We Amen. are the evidence of the God yeah, people the can't see. Yeah, that's that's what that's what's shown in Acts two. Amen. Yeah, they 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 um saw that these these low men are now speaking um in in all um, Their languages. tongues and such. Amen. Yeah. And that was the evidence. That, that these that people Christ are of God. With them. Amen. Amen. That Christ. Is everyone following? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's build upon this a little bit more. Can I have a reader for <coughs> Second, Corinthians. Second Corinthians 4, 6 and, 6 and 7? We just want to show that an earthen vessel is people. Can I have a reader for that? For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So what's the earthen vessel there? Us. Mm -hmm. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness have shined where? In our yes. hearts to give us what? Knowledge. And then the next verse says, for we have this what? Treasure. Treasure. In where? In, earth and in our hearts. We have this knowledge of God in our heart. And, and Jeremiah says this knowledge of God in our heart, that's our evidence of God. That's our evidence, is the knowledge of him. Is everyone following? Amen. Okay, so now let us continue. This is what Romario brought up because he, 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 he was seeing where this was going. Let's go to John 1. No, it's not John 1. It's Timothy, right? Yeah. Timothy. Okay, yes. 2 Timothy 3.16. And then please connect that with Job. Just read the bowl and then the bowl of 2 Timothy 3.16 and then um, just go to Job. I just want this one part. All scripture is given for instance. Given by. given by inspiration of God. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Okay, so what's inspiration based on Job? It's all scripture. Yes, you can say that. But what does the Bible define inspiration as according to Job? Understanding. Understanding. So all scripture is given by the what? Understanding, understanding of God. Mm -hmm. And it's profitable for what? It's profitable for us. So the scripture was God 
shed light into the hearts of the prophet. He gave them an understanding and those men wrote out what they understood and received from God. And that's the evidence that was placed into the hearts of the prophets. And they took that evidence and they wrote it out. And the Lord wants to put what's written out into our earthen vessel, into our heart. Because mm -hmm. this is the evidence that the Bible's inspired. How so? Because the understanding of the Bible should lead me. Can somebody read Job 28, 28? I forgot to put that in. Can someone go to Job 28, 28? Someone read Job. In, because inspiration, Job says, Job 32, 8, is understanding. There's a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth him understanding. So inspiration is understanding. And Job, the same book, 28, verse 28, says this is what we do with understanding. And unto man, he said, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. So what's understanding? To depart from evil. So the inspiration of the Bible is designed to lead men who believe it to depart from what? Evil. And their departing from evil is the evidence that the Bible's inspired. I used to smoke, but the Bible said I shouldn't smoke no more. So I give evidence that this word is inspired because the understanding of this led me to stop smoking. I used to drink, but this Bible says the drunkard shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So this understanding led me to put away my drinking. I used to commit adultery, but this Bible says what? Thou shalt not commit adultery. So this understanding led me to stop committing adultery. The, I used to steal, but the Bible says what? Thou shalt, thou, shalt thou shalt not steal. So that understanding led me to stop stealing. And I'm given evidence that this word is really inspired. Because the evidence of this word is leading me to depart from evil. And that evidence is designed to appeal to people's senses because they knew who we were once before. And then they see who we are now. That should be evidence them. Man, what power is leading him to do that? Because he used to drink 30 years of his life. And one day he woke up and stopped drinking. And for 10 years, that man who used to drink for 30 years didn't drink for 10 years. Is that humanly possible? Can someone who's given their life to drink for 30 years just wake up one day and stop drinking? It's physically impossible. It's not natural. They can't do it. Is anyone following? Mm -hmm. So one but let them read the Bible just one time. And the inspiration found in this will lead them to put away their drinking just like that. And they give evidence to their family and their friends of the, of the God that they can't see. We are the evidence of the God that can't be seen when we receive his truth into our hearts. Amen? Mm -hmm. That's what it does. But let's look at another. So here's, here's the thing. Let's say they don't, we change. Asante change. Aiden is, Aiden is evidence of Asante and Romario's faith. It's not natural for Aiden to be given testimonies. Do we see kids four years old giving testimony about God? No. What inspires that? What inspires that? Their parents. <laughs> it's not natural to see us keeping the seventh day Sabbath. When we were in the world, we cared nothing about our worship on the Sabbath. We were not interested in that. Well, what brought that about? We're vegetarians. Well, what brought that about? What brought about these changes that made us vegetarians? Now let's say we made these changes. Mm -hmm. People don't believe their senses. They don't believe the sight that we changed. They don't believe their hearing that we stopped cursing. They don't believe, they don't believe their, their, their sense of touching by seeing us how we dress. They don't believe their, their senses by seeing how we eat. So they don't believe their senses. What's the other one? I missed one. Yeah. Smell that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That, that we don't wear those glamorous perfumes and things anymore. So we change. So they don't believe their senses. So they see us make this change and for, for five years, six years, seven years, and they're still unconvinced that the Bible is inspired by the changes they see in our life. Then what's God's secondary formula? What's the secondary formula? Can I have a reader for 2 Peter 1.19? We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Stop right there. So they don't believe the senses of your change. So what does the Lord say now teach them? Prophecy. Prophecy. Because Christ says, I didn't put it in there. Behold, I've told you before it has come to pass, so that when it has come to pass, you might what? Believe. Okay, so if they don't believe you, that you change, that the Bible is the reason for your change, now teach them the prophecy. The, the, the prophecy must now agree with the change you made. Is everyone following? Mm -hmm. So not only did you change, but now God has given you the gift to interpret prophecy. 
He's now giving you the gift to explain prophecy to them, to look at nature and explain how nature teaches prophecy, to read your Bible and to explain how the Bible teaches prophecy, to look at the testimony and to show how the testimonies teaches prophecy. And it's this prophecy is the reason for my change. Is everyone following? So they don't believe their senses in seeing you change. Well, hopefully they'll believe God's more sure word of prophecy. And what does prophecy mean? Does anyone know? Like foretelling. Foretelling of events. Say it out loud. Foretelling of events. Foretelling. But I love this saying. History in advance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a more sure word of history in advance. So when God tells us a history that's coming in advance of its coming, and then it comes to pass, it's designed to give us the faith or the evidence to support that all scriptures inspired. That all mm -hmm. scriptures inspired. And hopefully, if they receive that evidence with their sight, they're hearing, they're smelling, they're tasting, they're touching, and be convinced that the same inspiration that inspired the Bible and the coming to pass of prophecy will come into their lives and change and transform them and allow them to go from bad to good. Mm -hmm. But if they reject the evidence of you changing and they reject the evidence of fulfillment of prophecy, they're going to remain bad and no. see no more good. Yeah, they're going to go from bad to worse. They're going to go from worse to worse. Yeah. Because they rejected the one evidence that God, has, that God gave them that was sufficient enough to convince their intelligent understanding that there is a God in heaven to fear, and that should have moved them to change their lives. So here's what the Lord did. Remember what Jeremiah said. Take this evidence of the purchase and put it where? In an earthen vessel. So let's go see the evidence of purchase. Go to John 1 now. Go to John 1. Can I have a reader for John 1? I think it's 1 and then 14. 9. 1 and 14. Thank you. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Stop right there. It, and you're going to read 14 now, right? Mm -hmm. So let's take what we just said and apply it to 1. In the beginning was the what? The Word. In the beginning was the evidence. <laughs> in the beginning was the history in advance. In the beginning was the inspiration. And the inspiration, the evidence, the history was with God. Is everyone following? Mm -hmm. All of this is in Christ. Christ yeah. is the evidence of God. Himself, yeah. His word is the evidence that he is. Because it says all scripture. Christ is all scripture. It says we have a more sure word. Christ is the more sure word. He is the I am. He is the past, the present, and the future. He is the history that's in advance. So the history that's in advance, read, now, read verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. You can stop right there. And the history that was in advance came, and the inspiration, came to pass before and the, your eyes. it came what? It came to it pass, came before, to pass your before your eyes. Yeah. Christ did things that it wasn't natural for man to do. And it was designed to appeal to our eyes, to our hearing, to our tasting, to our touching, and to our smelling. Everything Christ did appealed to people's senses everything and it was designed to move them to believe in the god in whom they can't see christ is the greatest evidence this world will ever see that there is a god to fear and those who receive his faith what is his faith his evidence those who receive his the evidence, evidence jesus of jesus christ they know not, yeah. amen they will live that same life and that's the strongest evidence that God really sent his son to save men from sin. God, Christ purchased us with his blood and he went before his father. and He says, Father, I want to buy that field. I know that field has become a tear. I know that field is full of sin. I know that field is full of evil, but I believe that they can change. I believe if I tell them about your inspiration, I believe that if I tell them about your history that's in advance, I believe they'll make up their mind and change and change their evil course and change their drinking and change their smoking and change their eating meat and change their breaking the Sabbath and change their adultery and change their curse. I believe they will do that. Just send me and let me be the evidence that there is a God to fear. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world, he sent the evidence. He sent the strongest evidence that he can possibly send to the human family, and it's his son. Is everyone following? Mm -hmm. This is the reason why we are Christians. This is the reason why we are Seventh-day Adventists. This is the reason why we keep God's commandment, because God gave us evidence 
And that evidence is his son. Christ is the greatest evidence that we can ever have. And when we receive him and believe him and receive him into our hearts, we become the greatest evidence to people as well. Amen? And that evidence is our life. If they don't believe our life, hopefully they'll believe the words coming out of our mouth about the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. And by seeing how prophecy is fulfilled in the past and seeing how prophecy is being fulfilled today, hopefully they'll be convinced of the prophecy that will be fulfilled tomorrow. And hopefully this understanding that appeals to their reason would lead them to look and live the same life that we're living. Amen? Amen. That's what God wants. He wants to put the evidence in earth and vessel. There's no such thing, no such thing as blind faith. No such thing. Yeah, yeah, if you don't have evidence, guess what you don't have? You don't have faith. If you don't, Val, do you have evidence for why you keep the Sabbath? Yes. You have faith. Rich Mario, do you have evidence for why you're a vegetarian? Yeah. You have faith. Aiden, do you have evidence for why you give testimony? Yeah. Yeah. What is your evidence, Aiden? Why do you give testimony? Of God, their life. Praise God. Because of God, right? Yeah. Amen. Exactly. Out of the mouth of babes. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's his evidence for why he gives testimony. Because of who? God. God. Isn't that what the scripture says? Amen. That's what the scripture says. That's his evidence. So he has evidence for why he gives testimony. Why don't we give testimony? Is it because we don't have evidence? Is that why we don't give testimony? Because we don't have evidence? Why do we eat what we eat? Do we have evidence for why we eat that way? Well, Mario says he has evidence, and I believe his evidence, because it's my evidence. Val has evidence for keeping a Sabbath, and I believe her evidence. Why? Because it's my evidence. In order to be a Christian, we must always have what? Evidence. evidence. There's no such thing as an evidenceless Christian. No such thing. It doesn't exist. In fact, that's called evolution or atheism. Yeah. Because it's bottomless. It has no foundation for why you're a Christian. To say you believe in Christ without evidence of the Christ you say you believe in, you don't really believe in Christ. How can you believe in something without evidence? Yeah. Does that make sense? Does that appeal to your reason? No, it doesn't appeal to your reason. It's nonsense. It makes no sense. That's what nonsense is. It's no sense. Mm -hmm. A Christian religion is a reasonable religion, the Bible says. Okay, next one. What's the next read? Is it Hebrews 11, 6? John 1, 12. John 1, 12. Yes, okay. But as many as received him, to them he um, gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Even to them that what? Believe yeah. on his name. Have so we must, we must believe the what? The evidence. The evidence. Okay, Hebrews 11, 6, right? Yeah. Okay, please read that. But without faith, faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That he's a what? A rewarder. But let's read that text and let's take it one step at a time with all the evidence that we've drawn from God's word. Amen? Amen. It says, the Bible says, but without faith, it's what? Impossible. Impossible. What did Hebrew say faith is? Substance things hoped for. The what? Evidence. evidence. So let's, let's, let's take Hebrew's definition and apply it to that text. But without evidence, it is impossible to please God. If you have no evidence for why you keep the Sabbath, you're not pleasing God. If you have no evidence for why you're a vegetarian, you're not pleasing God. Even if you're doing it. Even if you're doing it. Yeah. Because Isaiah says your righteousness is what? Filthy, filthy rags. rags. Why is it filthy? You have no evidence. Yeah. You can't support it. You can't even support the good that you're doing. Yeah. In order to do good, even, even if you're not stealing the Bible says, even if you're not stealing, if you have no evidence for why you're not stealing, you're not doing good. Yeah. You just know what good is, but you're not really doing it according to God's standard of what good is. God's standard of good, we must have evidence for why we're doing the good in which we're doing. Because we could be doing something that we think is good, that's what that will lead to. You will be doing something that you think is good, having no evidence, but you think is good. What, what makes you think is good? Your own mind. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says, lean not to your own, own understanding. understanding. Your own understanding makes you depart from something that you think is evil, but is really good. Yeah. How do I know that? Many people keep Sunday, but they depart from the Sabbath. 
Isn't that what the Bible says? But they think they're doing what? But they have no evidence for keeping what? Yes, so why are they keeping it? Tradition. Because of what? Tradition. But the Bible says, but without, with, without, without what? Evidence. Without evidence for keeping that day, it's impossible to please God. And the Bible says Jesus did always those things that what? Please it. So that means Jesus had evidence for every single thing he did. Mm -hmm. How do I know that? Because when Satan came and tempted him, what did Christ say? It is written. He gave him the evidence. He gave him the evidence for why he was doing what he was doing. So the example that Christ left me, everything that I do, I must have evidence to support. Even if it's brushing my teeth. It, it, yes, it's that bad. It's that because it's what? <laughs> Cleanliness. <laughs> so I have evidence. Even taking a shower. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that is I true. have to have evidence. Cleanse the sanctuary. What, what yeah. must I do? Cleanse the sanctuary. Because the Bible says, wash ye, make you clean, clean and put away the evil of your doing. Mm -hmm. So I have evidence for why I take showers. Morning and Amen. evening. Amen? Amen. I have evidence. I have evidence for, we must have evidence for everything. So what does that mean? I need to examine myself and, and question, why am I doing this? What is my reason for doing this as a Christian? Does the Bible support what I'm doing right now? Search the scriptures. That's what it says. Search it and examine yourself and see whether you be in the faith. Amen? Whether you be in the way of evidence. Examine. The Bible literally gives us instruction for how to live our day-to-day -day life. It literally gives us instruction. It literally gives us evidence of how to do that. And to continue with this, okay, what's the next heading? I think it's a question. Mm -hmm. How do we believe that he is? How do we believe that he is? Can I have a reader for <coughs> Romans 10? Romans 10, is it? 8 to 10. 8 to 10, thank you. How do we believe that? Because the Bible says we must believe that he is. So how do we believe that he is? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. With the heart man what? Believe. Man believes. But what wants he believe? Paul tells you, for the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. Because he says in 2 Corinthians, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined where? In our heart. God has given every single human being on this earth, whether they're good or bad, evidence of his existence. How do I know that? What's my evidence for that? The breath. The breath? Hey, praise God. That's one of the greatest ones. You're breathing. Mm -hmm. What's another one? A simple one. A mo I mean, so simple. Breath is very simple. What's another simple one? That God has given light to everybody. Oh, the sun. The sun. And the moon. Isn't that what Jesus said? Mm -hmm. God commands his light to shine where? On the just and the, and the unjust. He commands the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. And the Bible tells me what the rain is. As the, as the rain cometh down from heaven, so my word comes down from heaven. So evidence comes down from heaven every day. Amen. But some people believe the evidence that comes down. And some people don't believe the evidence because John 1 says the light shined in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. And because men don't comprehend the evidence that was given to them by God, the Bible says for God sent a witness. He sent somebody that accepted the evidence that shined upon him to go bear witness of the evidence in which he received. And that's where we are. We are God's witnesses or his evidence to his existence. Amen. Amen. What we do bears witness or gives evidence of the existence of an almighty God. And to them that receive him, those who receive our witness, God's going to give them power to, ch to make changes in their lives as well. Just by simply seeing the changes you made in your life. And that Romans 10, I think now what is truth? It goes to John 18, right? Yes. Okay, John 18. Let's look. Pilate wanted evidence. Christ was standing before Pilate. And, and Christ was witnessing to Pilate. Christ was, giving him all, Christ was giving him all the evidences that Pilate can bear. And then Christ says this, John 18, 37. Here's what Christ says. Thou sayest that I am the king. To this, to this end I was, was I born. And for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness. And I should what? Bear witness. Bear what? Witness. Evidence. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what Jeremiah says? 
Yeah. And isn't that what the definition? Christ came to bear evidence of the truth because truth is evidence. That's what it is. That's what truth is. Continue. Un uh, witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. Pilate found no fault in the evidence that Christ gave him. Mm -hmm. But the evidence that Christ gave Pilate, it, he didn't believe it. Why didn't he believe it? He killed him anyway. Mm -hmm. He killed him anyway. Even though he had the greatest evidence. Because Pilate says, what is truth? That's a question everybody on this planet should be asking. What is truth? And what does the Bible say truth is? Evidence. And truth must appeal to the senses. Do you know if you tell a lie... It has no, it literally has no impression upon the mind. It doesn't. You have to actually be forced to believe a lie. Mm -hmm. yeah, you have to be forced because it does we weren't made to believe a lie. Mm -hmm. God made us to believe the truth. Mm -hmm. But because our first parents believed the lie of Satan, how did Eve come to believe that lie? She allowed Satan to force that lie on her. Disbelieve God's word. To, to do what? Disbelieve God's she word. She switched belief in God's word to for belief in his word. Mm -hmm. So now it's, it's in some sense it's natural. Now from that point on it's just natural for man to do wrong. Yeah. But praise God, God didn't take away man's conscience. Yeah. Our conscience <clears throat> bears <throat> witness to truth. Mm -hmm. Whenever we hear truth, it just makes sense to our conscience. It appeals to our sense. And then we say, wait a minute, that's true. Lie has to be forced upon us. It has to be. It has to be the only way for Satan to get you to believe a lie. He has to give it a little bit of truth, a little bit of because he knows we naturally our senses respond to truth. So he will give you the oatmeal, but he will mix it with what? Poison. poison. Just to give the, that a little bit more plausibility so that you would eat the poison. But you think it's oatmeal. You think the word that's being spoken to is the word of God because he quoted a few scriptures. Yeah. But it didn't work for Christ. It didn't appeal to Christ's senses. How do I know? Because Christ says the wicked one cometh and he has what? Nothing, Nothing. In, me. Nothing in me responds to his words. Nothing responds to him because his words is no evidence at all. It's a lie. He's taken the truth to teach a lie with that truth. And God has given us a conscience to detect truth from error. Truth always appeals to our senses. So when Pilate was saying, what is truth? At that moment, what Christ was saying was appealing to his senses. And then he says, what is truth? But what does the Bible say in John 14, 6? I am the way, the truth, and, and the life. life. The evidence he needed was right before, in front of him. Yeah. How do I know that? Because he said he confessed it with his own mouth. I find no fault in him. Is he just confessed that the evidence is real. But he says, crucify him. Mm -hmm. Some people still crucify the evidence anyway. Regardless. Mm -hmm. yeah. They kill their own conscience. Is everyone following? Yes. Whenever truth comes before us, we're to accept it right then and there. Why should we accept it right then and there? What is the power of truth? The next one, is it John 8? 17, 17. John, okay, yes, please. Hear. What is truth? Let's, the Bible answers it. John 17. Mm -hmm. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Ah, so God's word is what? True. true. This is our evidence that God is. Because this proves its own self. Amen. This is its own evidence that God is. Itself, mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. When you read this, you can't help but feel the inspiration that comes through this. Even if you just simply read it. There's a power that attends this Bible. And if you accept that power, that power will work within you both to will and to do of God's good pleasure just by simply reading it. But you're not to stop there. You're to deepen that conviction by deepening the evidences, by going from reading to studying, by comparing scripture with scripture and seeing how prophecy is fulfilled so that your evidence, your faith will increase. So instead of just having one witness, you now have two, maybe two or three, maybe four, maybe seven, maybe an infinite resource of witnesses as to why you're doing what you're doing. So now when anyone comes before you, Peter says, be ready always to give an answer to the what? 
be a failure. Mm -hmm. To the evidence that's in you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Peter is saying you should have evidence for everything you do. Because if anyone asks you why you're doing what you're doing, you want to give them the reasons of your evidence. Here's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Sanctify them through thy truth because I believe God's word is truth and I believe that God's Bible is the, is the guide to my life. And because I accept his Bible as the guide to my life, and here's the reasons why I accept this Bible as the guide of my life. As the sun influences and guides the earth with its light, so the Bible is to influence me and guide my earth with its light. Amen? How can evolution say the sun came from nothing when the sun is giving me information? In order for the sun to have information, someone who has information placed the information in the sun. And I take that information and I allow that information to be the influence of why I wake up every day and do the things that I do. Amen? Amen. And this is how God wants us to live. And the last two points. This is John 8 now, right? Mm -mm. No? Romans 10, 17. Okay, yes, yes. I forgot that part. Amen. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So how does faith come? By hearing. So how does evidence come? Hearing the word of God. So we need to hear God's word in order to have evidence. And God sends his Holy Spirit to convict us of sin. To convict means to convince. To convince us of sin. To convince us of righteousness. And to convince us of judgment to come. And he comforts us. And he brings things to our remembrance. And he also shows us things to come. That's the work of the Christ. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. What is he saying? He will give you all the evidence you need to support and sustain the life you're living now. Amen. That's what the Holy Spirit is going to do when he comes. He's going to guide you into the word of God so that you have all the evidence. When anyone comes and question your faith as to why you keep the Sabbath, you have all the evidence from the Holy Spirit to convince their senses as to why the Sabbath is the seventh day, or to convince their senses as to why you're a vegetarian, or to convince their senses as to why you pray morning, noon, and night, and to convince their senses why you're at prayer meeting, and to convince their senses why you worship in the morning and in, in the evening. The Holy Spirit will give you all the answers you need to convince people or to support the evidences as to why you're living the way you live. How do I know that? Because Jesus says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Every, Every word. word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This is how man lives. He lives by the evidence of God's word. So if we don't have any evidence for why we're doing what we're doing, we need to question our Christianity. Is everyone following? Mm -hmm. If there's no evidence to support why you're doing what you're doing, your, question, your Christianity is, is, is subject to question. Mm -hmm. It's subject to question. Because if I can't see evidence for why you're doing what you're doing, then why are you calling yourself a Christian? Yeah. A Christian is one who has evidence. Because the Bible says, but without faith, without evidence, it's impossible to please the God you say in whom you believe in. How can you believe in something you can't see if you have no evidence, evidence by the things you see? see. Yes. You That's must have evidence to, to believe in the God you can't see. Because that's the reason for your faith. And the last one now is John 8, right? Yes. John, yes, please read those last two. Here's what evidence does to those who receive it. Then, <clears throat> then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What does evidence do? Make you free. It sets people free. And what does no evidence do? Put you in bondage. Bondage. Puts you in bondage. How do I know that? Because the atheists literally have no evidence for why he's an atheist. The evolutionist has no evidence for why he's an evolutionist. They say they have evidence, but it's groundless. It's a false it's a, witness. It's, what is it? What? It's, a, it's false a false witness. witness. Yeah, I've never seen a monkey go from a monkey to a man. Who's ever seen that? Where's the evidence of that? You, you said this world been around for six billion years and you've never seen one evidence of a monkey going from a monkey to a man? Yeah, How is that reasonable? Not even one. But I can show you one Christian who went from a monkey to a man. He went from a beast to beast a man. To a man. I can give you an evidence of that. No, I can give you an evidence of an atheist who was once an atheist and accepted C.S. Lewis. I can give you one. Yeah. I can give you many witnesses of people who lived like animals and accepted Christ. And they changed their life. I can give you many evidence to support the inspiration of the Bible. And, and, to, and if you don't believe that, 
we can give you many evidence to the fulfillment of Bible prophecy. We can walk you through history and show you how Babylon, according to Daniel 2, came into history at the time that God said it should. We can give you evidence to show you the Medes and the Persians who defeated Babylon that they were the next one to come into history. We can give you evidence to show you that Greece was to follow the Medes and the Persians. We can give you evidence that the Romans was to follow the Grecians. And we can give you evidence that the papacy was to follow pagan Rome. And not only do we stop there, but we can give evidence as to why the United States exists at the end of the world. The United States is going to be the strongest prophetic evidence to the inspiration of the Bible. Amen. The United States. The Lord designed this nation to appeal to people's senses. Amen. The Constitution itself should appeal to people's senses. Mm -hmm. It should, if they just read it. Yeah. Because it says, we hold these rights to, to be, be what? Self what? Self-evident. Wait a minute, self is an evidence by itself? Yeah. Yes, self is an evidence by itself. That we've been endued with inalienable in rights. rights. From God. From who? From the Creator. So even within our self, we're an evidence of the Creator. Why? Because we all desire liberty we all desire liberty that's evidence in itself that there is a god because he's the only one that can give us liberty and the constitution bears witness to even our creator so by saying we all desire liberty it's also we all desire truth we all desire what truth just like pilot amen say it again say it again um he said the the last verse 32 john 8 says that and the truth Shall set you free. Yeah. So that means that's teaching us we're spiritually hungry too. We want something to satisfy our longing in our soul. We desire that truth. We desire liberty. Why do we desire it? Because we realize we're in bondage to something. And we want freedom from that thing we're in bondage to. And we're hungering for the truth. But many people don't come to the Bible, the one place that will feed their souls and set them free from that thing that's holding them captive and give them that peace and liberty of which Christ alone can give to them. And that's why God sent his son to bear witness of that liberty that God says man should have. Satan stole man's liberty in the beginning, but as soon as he stole it, Christ purchased it. As soon as he stole it, Christ brought it back. And then Christ came and brought the evidence to Adam and Eve and said, Adam and Eve, I know you sold your liberty, but I came to give it back to you. So even though you fell, you're free. And now that you're free, just live your life free. And every child you have, tell them about this freedom and tell them about this liberty so that they can go on bearing witness of this. But unfortunately, the people in Noah's time, they didn't bear witness to it. And the Lord had to destroy the old world by a flood. He had to bury up the evidence that he gave them. But praise God, he's given it back to us in his Bible so that we can live the life he wants us to live. So I pray that by the grace of God, this, this, this would inspire us to go search the scriptures and to find out what is the truth that I need to set me free. All of us have something that's, that's holding us back. It may be a wrong thought, but I want to encourage us that, that what will set us free, there's a truth in God's word that God has made specifically for you. There's an evidence in there for you. To free you from the bondage of, of suffering or pain or whatever it, whatever it may be, it's there. And if we go and gather it and we go pray and ask for it, I believe, just like he freely gave us his son, he'll freely give us the evidence that will set us free from whatever it is that's perplexing us. Amen? Mm -hmm. So let us close out um, this in a prayer request. Can somebody write it down? Like, uh, like, um, in the prayer request. Um, so at this time, we'll take um, some prayer requests.
and also that the Lord will increase our faith, will mm -hmm. increase, increase our, the evidences mm -hmm. to our faith. Increase of knowledge of the Did anybody text anything in the chat? It's part of the truth. Part of the truth. Amen. Six, right? Yep. All right. So we'll. Oh, one more. No. No. no, no, no. Okay. So we'll take three. Yeah, three players, and I'll do the first two. Shall we pray? Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for your word that's able to make us wise unto salvation. We want to thank you, O Lord, for the truthfulness of your word and the evidences in which you have given um, to, to, to sustain this word, O Lord. And, and, and I pray and ask, O Lord, as I place before you the, um, the, the, the requests of finance and health, please, Lord, may you hear our cries in regards to this. May you bless our little ministry um, with, with the funds necessary to do thy work, to do thy will. And may you bless those of us in this ministry with funds to continue to live our daily lives, O oh Lord, as we, we believe and trust, O oh Lord, that you will take care of us, as we have evidence that you've taken care of us. Our life and, our, and, and where we live is, is, is an evidence in itself that you've sustained and you've kept us these many years, and you'll continue to do so as long as we remain faithful and loyal to you. And Lord, we pray for our health. For those of us who are sick and have been sick for some time, may you reveal to us what, what we can do, O oh Lord, to bring about the desired results of, of healing in which we need. May you lead and guide us to what we can do um, to improve our health. And until that time, O oh Lord, help us to wait patiently, O oh Lord, for, for you to, to give the answer um, to these requests um, that in which we have need of. We thank you for hearing. We thank you for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for, for this fellowship that we've had with one another and this message that this light that we've received. We pray that we may that we may go away with, um, with, with many of the gems that, that we heard tonight, that it may carry us throughout the week. We also pray that you may please help us in our efforts to move to the country. The Lord, as you, you have told us, that it is that the environment is better, is better conducive to your people, that, that we may, um, that all the evidences that we see in nature would testify of your love, your grace, and your mercies upon us. We ask that you may please help us in our efforts to move there, and that you may prepare our hearts in order to do so as well. Please um, be with Chrissy's family. Um, pray that you may please bless, bless her children, that you may help her in, um, in raising them up. And, and, and Lord, for you, Lord, your word says uh, to train up a child in the, way, in the way that he should go, and they will not depart from you. So I pray that you may bless her family, and I pray that you may also be with uh, the fellow brethren that are in Jamaica as well. And Jason, we pray. Amen. 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 Merciful Father in heaven, we come before you once again asking that, that as we have heard the, the, um, the word spoken this evening, that you may also grant us an increase of faith, Lord. But with that increase of faith, Lord, we pray that, that great evidence may be um, shown forth from thy word that, we, that would sustain that faith, that would carry us into the things ahead. Please, um, Help us to endure these, these, these coming trials and even the, the suggestions of the enemy that may be coming upon our minds to, to, to not heed these things. But I pray that, 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 we, may not, that we may turn from those, those wrong thoughts and heed the, the inspirations of, of, of that spirit. I also pray that you may um, be with us as we are our... our trying to spread the, the, the truths of the things that the Lord has given unto us. As we are a, a small ministry, Lord, we, we have um, 
and an abundance of light that that you have given unto us. And we really pray that that you may open up many doors, that we may share these things. And though we may be small, Lord, we have we have many angels that uh, that that we can call upon that to aid us in the work ahead. So I pray that you may um, open up the way for us in, in in different avenues, that we may spread these things, and even even um, with the, the the doors that are open now, I pray that that they may lead to even more opportunities. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to say I left I left out one nice little witness to it. It was the last quote. I didn't read that. The one from Steph oh, Surprise. Yeah. It's really a nice quote that would uh, really brought it to a nice conclusion. I didn't get to read it. You know, so I just want to encourage us to, to read that quote in light of um, this evening. It's really a beautiful quote to reference that point. Yeah.